Hello everyone, it's Wednesday, December 7th. I'm David Song, Currency Analyst with Daily FX, here to cover the Bank of Canada's uh, last interest rate decision for 2016, and uh, as ex we'll see if uh, the Bank of Canada will keep that benchmark interest rate on hold at 0.5%. Seems as though that's the sort of consensus view here. And you know, before we jump into the announcement, um, you know, we'll take a quick look at what they said last time around. We have seen again uh, some. Mixed remarks, if you will, coming out of the BOC, of course, uh, back in October when we saw the monetary policy report as well. Uh, the BOC was largely outlining, uh, outlining this very neutral outlook for monetary policy. Of course, they did note that some of the risk, broader risk, it seems, remains tilted to the downside. So, again, we've seen the BOC keep that benchmark interest rate on hold last time around at a quarter percent, or excuse me, at a half percent. Um, but again, when we dug into the policy statement, nothing really meaningful out of the BOC, but you know, it's usually the last paragraph that I tend to look at first when we get these statements, sort of the conclusion here of what the BOCs mean. But again, given the downward revision to the growth profile and the later closing of the output gap, the bank considers the risks around its updated inflation outlook to be roughly ba balanced, albeit in the context of heightened uncertainty. Meanwhile, again, the new housing measures should mitigate risk to the financial system over time. So at present, the governing council judges that the overall balance of risk is still in the zone to which the current stance for monetary policy is appropriate and the target for overnight rate to remain at again, half a percent. But again, we've heard time and time over again from the BOC that you know they have looked at and continue to discuss whether or not the economy needs further a more accommodative stance for monetary policy. So you know we'll see if we get some relative relatively dovish remarks, but uh, for now we'll see if we get any sort of meaningful market reaction here. Again, not sure if we're going to get anything new, anything meaningful from Governor Stevens and Polo and Company. And uh, and on that, I already see Edgar beating uh, me to sort of a theme that I think we also need to watch. So even out of our following the Bank of Canada, and let me just sort of go over what we do face again following the BOC. We'll also keep a close eye on again the NISR GDP estimate for the UK at 10 o'clock, Jolt's jobs opening. Um, but of course, crude inventories, Edgar's already uh, looking at these numbers. We're looking for another contraction in inventory. So uh, we'll see how these numbers will fare. Of course, we got that sort of OPEC agreement. But um, the way I'll look at it, you know, we'll, we'll watch seasonal factors, right? Uh, maybe this holiday shopping season have you know pushed U.S. households to be out and about. Maybe it spurts more demand for gas we'll see Edgar but you know I don't really like to speculate especially on these numbers they could be very volatile and you know I would say they diverge from market expectations from time to time so uh, it's like uh, it's basically trying to flip a coin toss here we'll see how the numbers will fare but you know I, I would go with that sort of assessment yes if we do see a contraction in oil inventories may see the help to prop up prices but you know I'll talk also about crude prices here I think we're seeing some interesting developments and of course, we continue to note that historical relationship between the Canadian dollar as well as crude prices. Of course, the economy continues just to that oil price shock. So in terms of dollar CAD, guys, again, longer term, I'm still relatively bullish on this pair. I think we're just in a near-term pullback, uh, especially after the failed run here at that 36.30, 36.60 zone here. Uh, but for now, again, after we failed to hold above the previous month's low, I'm watching some of the downside risk. And uh, I took some of these Fibonacci's off of my chart here, but Again, for those of you that are a little bit shorter term traders, might want to take those October lows into the previous month's high. Uh, 38.2 comes in right around that 32.20, 32.30 zone, so we'll see if we can clear that. Again, maybe if we do see potential more upbeat tone coming out of the BOC. And uh, just a reminder about some of the data out of Canada, the employment report has been pretty strong. Um, inflation, I would want to argue, has been relatively sticky. GDP largely in line, and we did see that economic rebound in the third quarter of this year, especially following the Alberta fires. Right? Uh, so we'll see how the BOC uh, will, again, communicate their intentions, the monetary policy outlook, if you will, for next year. But for now, you know, I'm just calling this a near-term pullback. We'll watch that broader bullish channel information that we have carried over from pretty much the second half of this year. Uh, so we'll see if we get a further pullback from where we are. I'll let, again, the headlines out of the BOC speak on its own. Uh, but I do have to watch some of the downside targets after we've broke below, again, those no November lows. If we are able to clear that 32.20, 32.30 zone, uh, break close below that region, may bring up the six, uh, 618 
Next, 130, 160. I'll stretch it all the way down into that 130, 140 zone. So I'll keep that on the radar. But we'll see if we could work our way back towards the bottom of the channel, especially if we do see potential pop in oil prices, especially if we do see a further contraction in inventories. And let me just look over oil real quickly before we move on. Um, I have to say pretty constructive here. We had this failed run, failed attempt again uh, to close above 52 handle, but we did get that finally the move above that, but a very bearish candle right after the test that we had uh, just earlier on the week. So made it all the way up to fresh yearly highs, closed at the lows of the day. A very bearish looking candle that was there. So Edgar, you know, here's the broader pattern that I'm watching. I have to stay constructive, but is this just entering an exhaustion point? Is that RSI turning around ahead of 70? I mean, I'll stay constructive as I'm watching this near-term pattern here for crude, but uh, is it in for a deeper pullback? We'll see what sort of market reaction we get to the inventory numbers later on this morning, but um, looks like a very broad-looking ascending triangle formation, if I stretch that out a little bit, right? So it might be some time before we get a, a real meaningful move to the top side, but uh, I was pretty excited seeing that move above 52. Got a little bit disappointed after we've closed at the lows of the day and we've been pulling back. But, you know, I guess we could even argue, is this sort of a bull flag formation going on right now? I was sort of talking about that with the guys at the desk this morning. Uh, why am I getting the wrong tools here? Uh, but again, with this pullback, uh, we'll see if the BOC may shake things up. But we'll see if this will eventually limit some of the strength, limit the pullback that we're seeing in dollar cad, especially if we do see some weaker crude prices over the days ahead, right? And you know, and let me just talk about this theme that's going on, guys, right? Again, we're going through December here. We're going through the first full week of December. So I'm still in this mindset of, you know, watching this monthly opening range. So the first question on crude is, have we set the high of the month here, right? Are we going to consolidate going into the end of the month, end of the year, especially end of the quarter? You know, I'm already seeing talks about Again, always going to see major precision adjustments before these investment houses. Uh, investment houses, money managers have to close up their books for the year, right? So again, end of year dynamics may come into play. We'll see how that will fare over the coming days. But for now, uh, the way I'm looking at crude prices, nice move, nice move to the fresh yearly highs, but real big failed attempt. Very ugly looking candles. I think we could be in for a larger pullback from where we are, Edgar. Hope that helps. And you know, for now, again, bigger picture, I'm constructive, but, you know, watch what's happening here with some of the other commodity prices as well. I was actually talking about copper this morning, and is this one also maybe coiling up for a move higher here, especially given the breakout that we had from earlier this year? Right, so I'm pretty constructive on copper prices. Again, what does this say about not only commodity prices going forward, but even more so, I would say, about risk appetite. So, you know, we had this failed attempts at that 271.40 area. Broke above that again back in November. Quite a few times it really failed to close above that region. Um, but I'm relatively constructive from where we are. Very steep looking upward trend that's going on right now. But again, is this just a mere holding pattern, ascending triangle formation, a continuation pattern before we get a move higher in copper as well. Right. So continue to watch again some of these maybe risk sensitive commodities, if you will. And you know, just to get this out of the way as well. Bit of a different dynamic if you guys are watching gold and silver, right? We're getting this rebound in gold and silver, again, pullback in oil, uh, but we're seeing gold really fall off the cliff here, if you will, over the last few days, especially following the U.S. elections here. Uh, again, maybe driven by the macroeconomic outlook, if you will, monetary policy outlook for the Federal Reserve, uh, especially on the back of rising U.S. yields, rising U.S. interest rates, right? So watch the sort of weakness that we're seeing right now. But even in terms of gold, uh, watch the rebound that we're getting right now. We're finally seeing that RSI come above 30, right? come out of oversold territory. So we're finally starting to see this textbook RSI buy definition really start to take hold. Again, bearish bigger picture. Is it in for a rebound? And you know that's the sort of theme that I'm watching is have we set the highs, the lows of the month during the opening week of December, especially as we're probably going to see some meaningful adjustments in terms of market participation, positioning, if you will, going into end of the year, right? So just keep that bigger theme in mind, guys, over the coming days. But with that, uh, just about a few minutes or just under two minutes until we hit the data here. So let me just bring up dollar CAD. Again, we're holding this very tight range right now. And let me just do a quick wind down here. So if you guys have been watching this hourly, uh, I think we might be waiting for a potential move here. Again, I think we could be in for a larger pullback. 
uh, but it's been very holding this very tightening range, narrowing range, if you will, over the last 24 hours, 48 hours of trade. So we'll see if we get a meaningful push here and give you the direction. We'll see if the BOC will do it for us. Um, but again, given some of the better than expected data as of late, coming out of the ca uh, Canadian economy, whoops, I wouldn't be surprised whoops, uh, if you do see the BOC. Uh, again, more of the same, if you will, maybe a little bit more of an upbeat tone uh, given that we did get that economic recovery in the third quarter. Your term loves to watch downside 3220, 3230. Uh, top side for now, watch that 3310, 3320 zone, if you will. Again, guys, Bank of Canada widely anticipated to keep that benchmark interest rate unchanged at 0.50%. Here we go. Keeps the benchmark interest rate unchanged again at 0.50. BOC says here, current monetary policy stance remain appropriate. Uh, so more of the same. And let me see if I could bring up the policy statement here. I'm actually on their website refreshing the page. And whoops, um, they haven't uploaded document but here's some headlines I'm seeing Canada unlike US still has significant economic slack a uh, bit of a dovish tone dynamics of Canada's growth are largely as anticipated business spending non-energy exports still disappointing according to BOC new financing rules will mitigate housing imbalances so again we've heard those statements before uh, BOC goes on to say infrastructure spending isn't yet evident in GDP data so again noting maybe some of the disappointment with the data that we've seen as of late, maybe the BOC was looking for something more more robust, um, but says child benefits supported third quarter consumption. Uh, but again, BOC more the same here. Cautious tone, if you will, looking for some evidence that the economic slack is dissipating. Right? Um, can't really say it's been material here, but getting to the sort of whips all like price price action. Oh, finally we got the policy announcement here. Well, a very short statement from the BOC. Hmm. A little bit more dovish than I expected. Again, they're noting here total CPI inflation uh, has picked up in recent months, but is slightly below expectations, largely because of lower food prices. Core inflation is closer to 2% because of the effect of persistent economic slack is still being offset by that of past exchange rate depreciation, although the latter effect is dissipating, right? So uh, overall, very balanced tone from the BOC. I don't think they're in any rush to do anything, but... Uh, one thing that this brings me to uh, sort of think about for next year is, is the BOC approaching the end of the easing cycle? And, you know, despite dovishness, they keep bringing, you know, this statement here that policy is appropriate. Again, it looks as though they'll keep it steady as she goes, at least for the time being. Not going to lie, hints of dovishness, but... That's, I think, the big thing to watch for next year, guys. Not only the BOC, but the RBA, the RBNZ, with, again, all these central banks, um, the current benchmark interest rates there at record lows, will that be, or, or a theme next year will be, again, will we see these central banks approach the end of the easing cycles, right? Uh, again, we'll leave it up to market forces here. And, you know, for the dollar CAD, maybe we'll have to wait for the Federal Reserve interest rate decision next week, which, you know, I think will be a key market mover I did not want to do that. Uh, key market mover as we'll be getting the fresh projections coming out of the central bank. Uh, so until then, I'll look for the correction. Until then, I'll watch this sort of sideways price action here. And again, former support. We'll see if that will offer some new resistance. 3350, 3370 zone. Uh, near term, I'll watch that 3220, 3230 area. Uh, but along with that, ECB is up tomorrow. So I'll do a slight preview here, guys. Um, I do have... A Q&A session coming up at 12.30 Eastern. If you're around, I'll definitely spend some more time on that. Um, but here's just two securities to watch going to ECB Euro, of course. Uh, I think we, we're still in this sort of bear flag formation here. Uh, we're holding within the previous day's range. I'm not surprised we're seeing this sort of price action all ahead of the ECB. But uh, I think we're seeing this sort of consensus view that we may get some sort of meaningful announcement from the governing council tomorrow. 
maybe not only an extension of the deadline for the quantitative easing program, but will we also see a meaningful adjustment to the capital key? Uh, the guidelines of these non-standard measures, you know, as there has been this sort of big discussion about does the ECB have enough assets to purchase over the timeline, over the lifetime of this QB program. So, you know, tomorrow I think could be a big day for watching the year, but not only that. And this is where I want to sort of focus, bring your guys' attention today. I was really talking about this with Mr. Boutrous this morning is the DAX. Hope you guys didn't miss it. We're finally getting the breakout after months of consolidation, right? Uh, this was carried over from all the back in August. 10, 850, struggled, struggled, struggled. We're finally getting the move today. Take it for what it's worth. We'll see if it could close above again. 10, 80, 850, ahead of the ECB, um, but a nice move there. RSI, getting that conviction play as well with that move, the bullish trigger there, breaking out of that bearish formation also from back in August. So we'll see if these things will line up again, all going to the ECB. Uh, but for now, even watching the near-term patterns, higher highs, higher lows continues in the DAX. So this one seems to be outpacing its other counterparts. And you know, not only are we seeing that, we'll see if some of these other benchmark equity indices will play a bit of a catch-up. Nikkei 225, whoops, wrong letter. Uh, this is certainly on my radar. Uh, I think we're calling for a move higher here. We've been holding above that 18,230 region very nicely, uh, pretty much since the start of the month. And you know, as I mentioned before, in terms of what's happening with gold, in terms of what's happening with oil, have we maybe set the love of the month already? Right, as we started off, kicked off the first full week of December. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, but for now, 18, let's call it 18,600. We'll see if we could take that out. We'll see if we could take out again the highs on the first day of trade after we got that big move, and then we pulled back. Right? So watch and see. Uh, you know, we'll see if again risk sentiment will also be a key driver here over the coming days. And you know, not only do we have the Fed uh, next week, but the week after the Bank of Japan, they're left. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get much out of the BOJ, but again, given higher equity prices in the Nikkei, and you know what, given what's happening in the dollar yen, oops. I think the BOJ is pretty comfortable right now, but you know, I just wanted to bring up this view here, and let me just bring up another chart. But you know, watch what's happening with the dollar yen, risk appetite, uh, monetary policy outlook. I know sometimes it can be very difficult about you know putting all the picture together here, but let me just bring up these two charts, and uh, you guys can interpret it uh, on your own, take it for what it's worth. Um, but I, you know, I think a lot of uh, there's a lot of confusion about what's really driving markets right now. And here's going to be one of the big themes I think that I need to watch going into the end of the year. And I, I feel like a broken record because I've been talking about this coming into December as well. But if you're watching the Nikkei, you're watching the dollar yen, you know, they sort of look pretty similar, right? And I know... and. It, to be honest, I think if we flip this around, it kind of looks like the euro dollar. So, you know, watch what's happening with the euro, with the yen, where they're taking on, you know, this sort of role where when we do see risk appetite pick up, um, they get hit pretty hard, right? Uh, we'll see if that dynamic will continue over the remainder of the year. And, of course, there's a lot of things to watch out of the eurozone. We've gone through, again, the Italian referendum. We'll see what the ECB will announce uh, this uh, tomorrow. Uh, but at the same time, we have the elections coming out in France next year, general elections in Germany next year. So, you know, a lot of headwinds. To f a lot of headwinds. I think we, we may face in terms of uh, trying to uh, really trying to see where the exchange rate will be by then. Uh, also, we do have Brexit going on, right? Uh, but for now, you know, watch for sentiment here. I think they've been largely moving in tandem with again euro, yen, and also keep a close eye on uh, some of these triggers, if you will, technical indicators, and this is the one thing I want to mention here is, you know, that RSI for the dollar yen has been stubbornly stuck in the overbought territory for some time. So, again, I don't want to speculate on this, but I'm still waiting to see that move below 70 to look for a little bit more of a meaningful pullback. So, we had that bull flag formation spike higher. We made fresh monthly highs, right? Uh, we failed to test that at the beginning of the month. So we'll see if we finally get that sort of signal for pullback, right? That uh, textbook sell definition for the RSI, a move back below 70. We'll see if that will come up here, uh, especially ahead of the Fed, ahead of the BOJ later in the month. But you know, I'll leave it there, guys. I'm quickly running out of time, but uh, I'll go into more of these themes. Some of the other crosses, pairs that I'm watching, securities that I'm watching, 
especially heading into the end of the year. Uh, but with that, guys, hope to see you all again at 12.30 again, Eastern. But until then, the best of luck on your trades, and have a great day, everyone.